The second week of Ether Revolt results, a dangerous incident at GP Prague, and the professor plays the booster box game. It's January 30th, I'm Jeremy Knoll, and this is Split Second. Richmond played host to the SCG Tour this last weekend, featuring the second standard open to showcase Ether Revolt. After strong showings by Sahili and Black Green decks during the first weekend in Columbus, players were eager to see if there would be anything new to change up the metagame in week two, but it looks like those decks are here to stay, at least for another week. Two copies of Black Green Deliria made their way into the top eight, piloted by Todd Anderson and Maxwell Paustain, with only a single copy of Green Black Aggro by Corey Lynch managing to get there as well. Luke Feeney and his lone copy of Jeskai Control, which didn't feature the Sahili combo, managed to come in fourth, while the rest of the top eight was filled out by Sahili decks. Jeffrey Askin made it all the way to the finals with a four-color Sahili deck, while Charlie Murdoch in sixth, Brad Shepard in third, and the winner of the event, Dylan Donegan, all opted for the Jeskai Sahili build. The standard classic in Richmond, however, saw a lack of the Izzet Planeswalker in the top eight. The elimination rounds were slightly more diverse than the open, with two copies of Jeskai Control, one Mardu Vehicles, one Green White Tokens, one Green Black Aggro, and the event was rounded out by three copies of Black Green Delirium, including the winning deck piloted by Todd Stevens. Congratulations to all the winners this weekend, and make sure to tune in to twitch.tv slash scgtour on February 18th for the first Team Constructed Open. On the other side of the U.S., Grand Prix San Jose took place over the weekend, featuring an Ether Revolt Limited main event. The Top 8 consisted almost entirely out of players who are new to the Top 8 stage of a Grand Prix. Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch champion Jia Chen Tao finished in 5th place, and Grand Prix Phoenix 2014 champion Roberto Bernie finished in 3rd, with the rest of the field in their first Grand Prix Top 8 appearances, including eventual winner John Osbach. In preparation for the upcoming Pro Tour in Dublin, Grand Prix Prague saw many of the qualified players gather to test out their limited skills. With a top eight that included notable names such as Christopher Larson, Even Flock, and Pro Tour Hall of Famer Paulo Vitor Damadarosa, it was the five-time Turkish national champion Yusuf Kemal Vifa who raised the trophy at the end of the weekend. The main event results weren't the only news to come out of GP Prague over the weekend. On Friday during the event, one of the restaurants in the venue experienced a kitchen fire, which forced the tournament hall to be evacuated. According to the official report from the tournament organizer, all of the side events on Friday were canceled and the main event moved halls. The fire was contained quickly and no players or staff were injured. With each new set release, the professor at Tolarian Community College asks, is it worth it to buy a booster box? In an attempt to find out how often players will get their value out of opening a full box, the professor goes through a box and notes the value of all the individual rares, mythics, and foils to find out if he can resell enough to purchase a new booster box. For this series, the professor only counts the cards that are $3 or more to offset the cost of shipping. Will he be able to get more than one box out of this series? Find out by heading over to youtube.com slash community. That's our show for today, January 30th. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel to keep up with all the latest magic news and strategy. I'm Jeremy Knoll, and this has been Split Second. Including the winning deck, piloted by that guy with the tie, Todd Stevens. Come on down. Na -na -na.